Hi everyone, what's up? It's Andrea, welcome back to another video. Today I am gonna be just doing a little bit of a book haul and talking about the books that I will be reading in March. March? May, oh my God, it's very, it is, yep. Yeah. I hope you're all well. I hope you're thriving, you know, getting your vaccine. I hope you're, yeah. I have a ton of books to haul. So I'm gonna share the ones I think you guys be most interested in first. Oh my god, sorry. Gross. And then after I'll talk a little bit about what I want to read this month. So don't kill me, but I got a Kobo. <laughs> I got an e-reader. I was sent it, you know, to do a little Instagram post. So it's not sponsored or anything. It's just, it was just gifted to me, which is really exciting. I am definitely not an e-reader person. I am someone who is very romantic about their books and likes to feel them and smell them and, you know, just collect them. But recently I got an ARC that I'm so excited about that I'm gonna haul right now, but it's a digital arc because they weren't giving out any copies or they just told me that and you know, I got a digital version. So the first book that I'm gonna haul is digital and it is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard and that comes out this month, which is super exciting. I'm hoping to read it next, like that's on my TBR for this month. Um, and I, I cannot wait. You no, know, if you watch my Red Queen videos, you know, those are the videos that really propelled me into the booktube community because um, I was very obsessed with those books. This is a very highly anticipated book. It's probably one of my high, most highly anticipated reads for this year. Basically from what I gather, the main character is like the last of this ancient lineage. And she, of course, you know, as all YA heroines are, is the last hope to save the world from destruction. And then she has like this ragtag team of people that come along and help her save the world. So it gives me very Six of Crows vibes, which I love. I love a good ragtag team of like unlikable heroes, you know, people who are like villains, but they're the main characters. The next two books are also on my e-reader, but I think I might actually buy them this week, like the physical copies, because I feel like I can't not have the physical copies of these books. And they're both by Lee Bardugo. So the first one is Crooked Kingdom, because I've actually never read Crooked Kingdom before, which is baffling to me. And then the other book is King of Scars, which I had no idea existed. I have been so out of the loop, but apparently it's about Nikolai and he's probably one of my favorite characters in the entire series. So I'm excited to dive into that, mostly because I received a copy of the newest book in that duology, which is Rule of Wolves, which I'm hauling right now because look at this bad boy. It's like the cover. It's so beautiful. It's gorgeous. And then look at the inside. Look at this. It's it's amazing. So I feel like I have to get King of Scars in a hard copy as well. If you've seen my last video, you'll see that they sent me a beautiful, crazy, fun box of goodies for the launch of Shadow and Bone or for the release date of Shadow and Bone on Netflix. So go and watch that video. In that last video, I showed these two books. I'm hauling them right now, I guess. Um, they are the show tied versions of Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows, which is super awesome. They're gorgeous. Not 100% sure if I need them, so perhaps I'll do a giveaway. Yeah, that, those are the other, the next books I was gonna haul. So the next book I'm hauling, I actually picked up at the thrift store, and it's The Nest by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. I've heard such amazing things about this book, so I saw, like, you know, I picked it up when I saw it on the shelf because it's only like $4.99 at the thrift store. So from what I know about this book, it's about this family, this couple of siblings who have been waiting for like an inheritance to kick in. Um, so their father passes away and they're kind of like finally now able to have this money <laughs> in their life. And it's a kind of about how it affects each and every one of their lives. That's all I know about it, it's, you know, but I've heard it's very, very good. And I also am gonna haul a book from the same author and that is Good Company. I received this from a publisher, it just came out. So this book follows Flora, who is someone who is very content with her life. She feels like she's lived a very happy marriage, and then one day she finds something that kind of uproots all of that. She starts questioning her marriage, starts questioning her friendships. I love these kinds of books that are about more ordinary people because it's in contrast to reading like fantasy, you know, YA fantasy especially. It's really nice to then kind of be grounded a bit in something that feels a little bit more realistic. Anyway, excited for both of these books. I think they're gonna be good. Um, they're not on my May TR TBR though. I just am holding them today. Another book I actually picked up at the thrift store. 
is The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton. And I've never heard of this book, but the cover is just very beautiful. It's set in 1862. So you know, you know I love my mid to late 1800s type stories. In the summer of 1862, a group of young artists led by the charismatic and talented Edward Radcliffe descends upon Birchwood Manor, their plan to spend a secluded summer month in a haze of inspiration and creativity. But by the time their stay is over, one woman has been shot dead while another has disappeared. A priceless heirloom is missing and Edward Radcliffe's life is in ruins. It seems very much a mystery that's being unraveled and I love myself a good mystery. If somebody asked me, how do you decide what books you wanna buy or read? Um, a lot of the time it has to do with how pretty the cover is and I'm sorry, that's just, I'm going to admit it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That's just, that's how it is. Another book, I actually have forgotten to haul this. I've got it a really, a while back, but it is Played As It Lays by Joan Didion. It doesn't have a dust jacket because I got it from thriftbooks.com, which is like this really great um, online thrift store, thrift store, thrift bookstore. And I've heard some really great things about Played As It Lays and I read my first Joan Didion novel uh, a few months back. I really did enjoy it, so while I have literally no idea what this one is about, I'm still excited to dive into it. I'm not sure when I'm going to add it to my um, TBR, but it's here and I own it. That's that. The next book I got is We Are Not Ourselves by Matthew Thomas and this is thrift store find. I pretty much don't buy new books these days. I'm either sent books or I buy them at the thrift store. This book follows Eileen who was raised by Irish immigrant parents and she sort of had to be a caretaker for her family and everyone. It was just a very wild rowdy family. Then she meets this guy, she marries him, she thinks he's perfect but it turns out their values don't really align and they aren't really, he isn't really who she thought he was. So she tries to motivate him, she tries to make him into the person that she thought he was, um, and everything just comes crashing down. Love these kinds of books, I'm excited to give it a read. The reviews look really great. The next book I also got from Thrift Books and it is A Year in Province by Peter Mayle. This book is about Peter and his wife and how they buy this really big beautiful farmhouse in Luberon in France. So they've thrown caution to the wind and they've just sort of created this new life for themselves which is something that I you know always dream of. I kind of wish sometimes I can just like uproot my entire life and move to Europe and and buy a big lovely house like under the Tuscan sun and renovate it and just write all day long. I've heard that it is a very good, easy, light, fun read, and I feel like I'm definitely gonna need something like this in between all of my fantasy books that I'm reading and the more serious type books that I'm trying to read, so excited. Okay, the next book is absolutely gorgeous. It's called Too Far by Rich Shapiro. Shapiro. And I, again, this is a thrift store purchase. This is a thrift store impulse buy because the cover was so freaking beautiful. And as soon as I, opened it up and read the synopsis, I was really very intrigued. So I'm just gonna read it to you. On the outskirts of Fairbanks, six-year-old Robbie meets a mesmerizing girl his own age, and together they explore the mysterious woodland surrounding their homes. The world they discover is built from their fantasies and inhabited by creatures born from their dreams. As their homes become increasingly unstable, the children travel deeper and farther into their private world, the forest, and the gods who inhabit it become their refuge. Told as a parable and vividly observed, Too Far is an exhilarating and heartbreaking story of an end to innocence that captures the triumphs and follies of the child's imagination as it struggles to regain thoughtless and free. I am so excited to have the time over the next couple of months to maybe pick this one up. It seems very intriguing. I love it. The next book that I'm gonna haul is more of a coffee table book, but it is probably the, my favorite book that I own. I bought this last summer, I think. I can't remember where I bought it from, if I got it from Chapters or if I got it from a thrift store. I cannot tell you where I found it, but when I found it, it was the only one there. It was kind of a little bit ruined, but I had been looking for something like this for a really, really long time. It is Vivian Meyer, a photographer found. So it's not just a photo book, it, mm obviously has information about her and her life. If you don't know this, but you probably don't know this because I don't feel like I've, I've really spoken about photography at all on this channel, but um, Vivian Meyer is my favorite photographer um, and I had been dying to get my hands on some of her work like printed so that I could just like 
have it in front of me and look at it. Um, and this is just such a beautiful book. Just to show you, like, the photos are so beautiful and oh, she's a street photographer. Um, so it's not just photos in here. There's also like, you know, some history about her and her life, which is really awesome, but so wonderful. And why I love Vivian Meyer so much as a photographer is because for the most part, she would have like hated that she is a famous photographer, which is really cool to me. Um, she was a very secretive person. She was very, very much kept to herself and liked to spend time alone. And I'm pretty sure that she hasn't even seen a lot of the work that is in this book because a lot of her, um, her roles or her negatives were found and some of them weren't, hadn't been developed. So it's just, that's just insane to me that you can take so many beautiful images and not have even seen all of them or, or they weren't even that impactful to you, you know? For, for her, it was almost as if she, the act of taking a picture was, was the art, you know? It didn't really matter what happened afterward, but that moment of capture was the art. And that's just so freaking beautiful to me. Wow, that's a pretty big haul. It's a pretty big book haul. In terms of my TBR, I have given myself three books <laughs> to read for this month as a challenge because last month I read zero books. Finish. I'm going to reread Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo because I haven't read that in so many years. And then I'm gonna read Crooked Kingdom for the first time. And then I am going to read Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. All right, those are the books that I bought, that I got recently. Um, yeah, that's everything. So I hope you guys have a really great rest of your day and um, have a great start to May. This is the first, one of the first days of May. So it's a new month, it's a fresh start. We can, we can all always begin again. We got this. Love you all. Love you all.